Welcome back. This is part two of uploading images in Laravel. In this episode, I want to tackle being able to resize our image on the fly. And we're going to pull in a library to do that. And you're going to see how easy it is. However, before we get to that, I want to show you something. Right after I uploaded the previous video, one of you pointed out that there is an easier way using the sometimes method to validate our data. So I want to show you what that looks like and what we have right now. So what we have right now is we are using this tap method, which clearly separates what is always required against what is sometimes required. However, Laravel does have a convenient shortcut for this. And if you're okay with having everything in one single swoop, this is what it will actually look like. So we can get rid of that altogether. And then we can move this line up here and add the keyword sometimes in front of it. And we can delete all of this code. That does clean up this validate request method very nicely. The only thing with this approach is that this image, even though is not always required, is clumped together with all of your other fields. So if your form is relatively large, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between really truly required fields and those that require some extra attention. But definitely a good call on this refactor. I will leave it like this from here on out, but either approach will work. It's up to you. So thank you so much to Natish for sharing that with us. All right, let's move on from there. So this store image method, this is where we need to handle resizing our image. Like we talked about in the previous episode, anybody can upload any size image into our application, but our UI would probably break. And that's how it typically is. You have a set constraint of what you can do. So let me show you something. I want to actually upload a fairly large image and you'll see what happens. So I have this new image here. It's called happy screen. And all it is is just a happy test screen. Let me pull that in and save customer. So now we have this really wide image. And then if we changed it again to the test image that we've been using, now we have a small image. Hmm. Obviously, this would not really work. We need to be able to constrain dot image. So how do we do that? Well, up until this point, everything we've talked about ships with Laravel. We haven't added a single thing to Laravel that doesn't come in the box. However, for image manipulation, there is a fantastic library called Intervention Image, which actually handles images extremely easy. So the package site is image.intervention.io. And here it is. So how do we pull in a package? We've never really done this before. So let's just follow the installation instructions. So first of all, we need to use Composer. Now remember Composer, something we installed in the very first episode. So now we need to use it. And it will look something like Composer require intervention slash image. All right, let's give that a go. Let me jump to the terminal and run Composer require intervention slash image. And what this will do is it will require that package for our project. It will add it to the composer.json file and then fetch all of the necessary documents. And then most packages that are Laravel compatible will automatically register itself with our application. To check that, you see here in this discovered packages section, we have intervention slash image. A lot of the packages now use that auto discover feature that was introduced in Laravel a little while back. So this package has hooked itself up into our application completely automatic. So all we need to do now is use it. So how do we use it? Well, to use it, we can use something called the facade. We're not going to get into facades in this episode, but just think of a facade of a way for us to interact with a class. So let's get right to it. Let's say image equals and then we need to fetch an image class. And the image class that we're looking for is this intervention backslash image backslash facades. And if we use that class, then we can call the make method on it. This method will take our image file and generate a class that has all of the data for the image inside of it loaded so that we can further manipulate it and then save it again. So now before we go on, I do want to make extra sure this image is being imported up here at the top and you see it right here. Use intervention image facades image. If you don't have that, it will not work. So what do we need to pass to make? 
Well, to pass the make, we have to pass our image. So that way it can create the image. Now, if you remember from the previous episode, we created the sim link for inside our public directory, storage, and then uploads. So we can reach into that file fairly easily. Let's use a helper function called public underscore path. And to that, we need to pass in storage. So that way we go inside this directory and then we can simply append our customer's image. Remember, customer's image will have the uploads slash and then the name of our file. So right after this call, we can set, I want to fit this image and then it takes two parameters. Let's say 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And then let's save the image. And that's it. Believe it or not, that will take our image. It will resize it and save it and put it away in the same place. All right, let's give that a go now. I'm gonna hit save, hit back to Chrome. And if you remember, when I uploaded that larger image, you remember it got kind of large. See what happens now. And we get an error, image source not readable. All right, we must have made a mistake. Let's see, public path. Okay, so storage, we need to add a slash. Because remember that uploads, and I will actually show you this. Let me die and dump this customer image very quickly just to show you what we have there. So you see that uploads doesn't have a slash. So we need to be able to add the slash right after storage so that it finds the correct image. All right, so with that out of the way, let me hit refresh again, and there we go. So now you see that this image has been fitted to 300 pixels by 300 pixels. Let me try the old image that we've been playing with as well, so you see the difference. Save customer, and we get the exact same size. So that's pretty cool. Now don't confuse fit with crop. Fit and crop are slightly different in that fit will always generate an image that is the exact size that you're asking of it, but every single pixel will be filled with the image as opposed to crop. Crop will take an image, but only go as far as it can to fit the image inside. So to show you the difference between fit and crop, I'm gonna make a quick change here and I'm gonna make this extremely tall, right? So we'll say 300 pixels wide, but 1000 tall. All right, so I'm gonna run the fit first. Let me run that large image again. Save customer. So now, of course, we have a very tall image. And now I will leave that open and let me bring that into a new tab. And what I wanna do here is resize the same thing, but I will change from fit to crop. Okay, so slightly different method. And let me show you the difference with that. Edit, change, same image, save customer. And here you go. So that's the difference. You see that this image has filled everything and cropped everything out that it didn't need. As opposed to this image, where you create these black lines on top and bottom because the image is actually not tall enough to fit inside a 1000 pixel tall image. So that's the difference. This is fit and this is crop. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about the intervention image, you can see the API right here. So we've been using fit, so this is the fit, and of course, we just looked at crop. So one cool thing about crop and fit is that they do have options. So there's other things here that you can pass in. For example, in fit, we can determine what position we want the image to get fitted to. Of course, center has been the default, but you may prefer top left. So let me show you how to do that very quickly. Let's change from crop back to fit, and we'll say 300 by 300 again. As a third parameter, I'll pass null, but as a fourth parameter, let's pass a string. And let's pick one of these. Top left seems easy enough. So top left, hit save, go back here, and let's change our image one more time. Happy screen. So now, our image is being captured from the top left. So as you can tell, there's many different options that you can pass in, and a lot of the times, center is typically what you would want. You just want the center part of the image, but now you know how to be able to resize and save an image on the fly using this intervention image package. Great, so let's just do a quick recap of everything we touched on. So this is the new refactored 
validate request using this sometimes validation that we haven't seen up until this point. And that was as an aside. Obviously, that's a little bit of trailing from previous episode. In this episode, we mostly took a look at these two lines right here. So the first thing we did was we pulled in our intervention image package using composer require. And then we noticed that it discovered itself and completely hooked itself up into our application automatically. So that's pretty cool. Then we use the image facade, which we are importing up here under intervention image facades image. And we are using it down here to make an image using our public path. And then we're fitting that image to a square of 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And then as an extra credit, we did change the positioning that it used to do the cropping. And then finally, we just hit the safe method. Now, as a quick note on the safe method, we use the safe method with no parameters. You can pass in a parameter in here if you wanted to save it to a separate place, effectively doing a save as, as opposed to just a safe. If you just hit save, it will go back and overwrite the original image. So just remember with this method, unless you save it to a different place, you are overriding the original image that got uploaded by the user. So that is it for this episode. This is a very highly requested feature that a lot of apps will need. And Laravel with the intervention package makes it extremely easy to handle. So as always, leave any comments or questions down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next episode.